we are going to cut the head we are, i'm going to cut my head and this top portion of my head is called as calvaria so i'm going to remove the calvaria for you and when i remove the calvaria for you i'm going to go inside your skull from the top i'm going to remove the brain and we're going to see the base of skull from the top so i want all of you to take your skeletons take your skull open the calvaria and see inside see inside because you're going to see exactly what i'm drawing in here inside that skull when you see inside the skull now let us make a huge skull this is the skull okay these are the two ears this is the nose okay anteriorly Okay, now when you see that skull inside, right, you've got a bone in front like this. Okay, let me teach some, some neuroanatomy. So this is the bone in front, right? Orbits are here beneath it. So this is a part of the frontal bone. Okay, this is a part of the frontal bone and this is called as orbital part of frontal bone. Orbital part of frontal bone. So there is one orbital part of frontal bone on this side and one orbital part of frontal bone on this side because this is forming the roof of the orbit. In the center, you have got a bone which is a part of your ethmoid bone and this is basically called as your cribriform plate which has got multiple, multiple cribriform foramina. So, this is called as cribriform plate, okay. This has got these foramina which enters these olfactory neurons enter through that, okay. Then you have got a bone which is like Batman, okay. So, you have got this kind of a bone which is like Batman and this is Batman-like bone is called as lesser wing of sphenoid i want you all to see what is the lesser wing of sphenoid in the skull you have right now okay so lesser wing of sphenoid is coming like batman right and the projections that are produced by this batman these projections are called as anterior clenoid process it's called as anterior clenoid process okay anterior clenoid process now here only there is a fissure inside here there is a fissure here this fissure here is called as superior orbital fissure. So, you have got one here and one here. These are called as superior orbital fissures which are actually hidden within the lesser wing of sphenoid. Okay. Now, you have got two processes like this. These are called as posterior clenoid process and you have got a projection down from this posterior clenoid process which is called as clivus. This is called as clivus which also forms a part of the sphenoid bone. So, this is clivus which comes down. Now, this clivus is coming down up till a huge foramen behind which is oval. And this is called as the foramen magnum. Magnum means large, right? A huge foramen here. Okay. Now, now let's put up very important bones which are important for the ear, right? The major ear is inside these bones, which are like these inverted pyramids. Okay. And what are these? These are petrous part of temporal bone. These are petrous part of temporal bone. Petrous part of temporal bone, which are there inside the skull, right? Okay. Great. Okay, now let's make a very important opening which is present in the posterior cranial fossa. So, this is the posterior cranial fossa, this is the middle cranial fossa, and here is the anterior cranial fossa. Correct? So, this here, this, this particular petrous bone has got a very important opening in the posterior cranial fossa, and this opening has got basically a canal. It's like a canal present here. And it's present here also. Okay. This is called as internal acoustic meatus, or we can also call it internal acoustic canal. It's called as internal acoustic meatus, also called as internal acoustic canal. Okay. So till now we have understood some basic things, right? Now, what is this bone here? The black that is left out. This bone is a greater wing of sphenoid. So if I told you the Batman is like the lesser wing of sphenoid, this is a greater wing of sphenoid. This is the greater wing of sphenoid. Why am I telling you this? Because trust me, all your concept of acoustic neuroma is, is here over this. We are going to trace everything how the acoustic neuroma spreads over this diagram. Because if you understand this diagram, everything becomes easy. Okay? So keep drawing, keep drawing. And you will remember a lot of foramen of the skull also through this. So we have done the internal acoustic meatus, right? Now, if I say in the middle cranial fossa, there are three important openings. There are three important openings in the middle cranial fossa, three foramen. Okay. Now, you know that there is a very uh, nice character in uh, a series called as Friends, right? And his name is Ross, right? So, you can remember there are three openings in here, which are Ross. So, it's rotundum. In the same sequence, there is ovale. And there is a smaller one, which is called as spinosum. 
So there is Ross here also, right? So there is rotundum or foramen rotundum. There is foramen ovale and foramen spinosum. Okay. The same goes here. There is foramen rotundum. There is foramen ovale and there is foramen spinosum. Okay. Now, there is another foramen which is present next to the internal acoustic meatus here, like this. This is called as jugular foramen. This is called as jugular foramen. So it's present like a jagged edge, like oval kind of a structure. This is called as jugular foramen. Okay. Fine. Now, there is another foramen which is present on each side of the foramen magnum. And this foramen here, this is called as the hypoglossal canal. This is called as hypoglossal canal. This also is a hypoglossal canal for the hypoglossal nerve to exit. Okay. We have got the jugular foramen, we got the hypoglossal canal, the foramen magnum. There is foramen rotundum, ovale as well as spinosum. Okay. Now, and we have got the superior orbital fissure. Okay. Now, let's start putting up things. Now, you know what passes through the foramen magnum. One important structure that passes through the foramen magnum is your brain stem. Above is your midbrain, then comes the pons and medulla goes through the foramen magnum down. So, medulla passes down through the foramen, right? Now, you know that what attaches behind to the brain stem? What attaches, if this is my brain stem, what is attaching behind my brain stem like this? Like a, like a spherical circle? So, there is a very important structure which attaches behind the brain stem and it is actually attaching to all parts of my brain stem. It's actually attaching to all parts of my brain stem. It is attaching to the uh, midbrain, the pons as well as the medulla. So, what is this, this, this particular structure? This is the cerebellum. So, the cerebellum is attaching to the brain stem in the center and it attaches to the brain stem by certain peduncles or we call it as pillars. So, midbrain, the cerebellum attaches by superior cerebellar peduncle. To the pons, it attaches by middle cerebellar peduncle and to the medulla, it, it attaches by inferior cerebellar peduncle and that is what the basic learning we do when we read about the skull base, when we read about the cerebellum anatomy, right? Okay, so we have made the cerebellum also, right? Now, do you see some kind of a triangle getting formed now? Okay, and I can say that let's focus on this triangle here. This triangle here. Okay, so if you see this particular triangle, it is bounded anteriorly and medially as well as laterally by the petrous part of temporal bone and the clivus. Correct? So I can say anterior, medially and posterior laterally there is clivus, petrous part of temporal bone. So I can say that posterolaterally as well as anteromedially, I've got the clivus, the petrous apex, this is the apex and the base of the petrous bone, which is forming these boundaries, anteromedially as well as posterolaterally of this particular triangle, right? And if I see medially, if I go medially, then it is the brainstem in the center. So medially it is the brainstem. Okay. What is posteriorly? Posteriorly is the cerebellum. So, posteriorly is the cerebellum. And what is superior to it? Superior to it is a tentorium. Tentorium is a dura, right? Which is covering. So, tentorium cerebelli. So, superiorly, it is tentorium cerebelli. So, we've got andromedially the petrous apex as well as the clivus and posterior laterally it is the petrous pyramid, the base of the petrous pyramid and then you've got posteriorly that is the cerebellum, medially it is the brainstem and superiorly it is the tentorium cerebelli. All of these forming a kind of a triangular space and this space is a subarachnoid space. This space is a subarachnoid space. Subarachnoid space. And we call this subarachnoid space as our cerebellopontine angle or we also call it as a CP angle or cerebellopontine angle okay or a CP angle okay now this what I told you in the beginning was that it is a CP angle pathology 
that means vestibular schwannoma are the ones which are happening in this particular triangle in this particular domain so when we are going to do an mri we are going to actually see that this is the angle which is involved in this particular tumor right okay